In this podcast interview, you will hear Andy Fairweather Lowe, a really great guitar player from the UK who played with Eric Clapton, Roger Waters, George Harrison, The Who, Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Nicks, David Crosby, and many, many more. The day I met Andy, he was playing a headline show with his band The Lowriders in the Boerderij in Zoetermeer, the Netherlands. I was invited to play as his support act and I could not resist the opportunity to sit with him for a full hour and talk with him about his life, his music and just listen to his amazing, inspiring stories he has to tell. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation. If so, please hit that like button, leave a comment and don't hesitate to subscribe for more guitar related content in the near future. No, I'm fine. Yeah, cool. Okay. And for your information, I'm going to do a theater tour myself in the fall. Oh, fabulous. Um, and it's going to be an homage to the Unplugged album. Really? Yeah, because it's 30 years ago. Right. And the album, for me, is so important. It, it changed my life, actually. It's, um, I, I think it's, it's special for lots of reasons, emotional reasons, but on a musical level, to eventually get to do something without an amplifier, yeah. that the instrument you play is what it's all about. Yeah. I wish I could do it all. It can't, it can't be done all the time, but it was pretty magical. Um, we just come back from Japan, with George Harrison, oh, wow. toured, toured uh, Japan with George. And the next thing we went into was Bray Studios in, uh, in, in London. And, uh, we spent, I think it was three weeks at Bray Studios and eventually they filmed the show. Um, every day was magical. Yeah. Every day we would play, not all the songs, but if we ever got to play Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out and we'd finish and I'd go, is there any chance we can play it again? Yes. Could we just play it again? Um, when it came to um, the beginnings of the things, uh, of, of going into the sessions, Eric said, uh, you play mandolin, don't you? I go, no, I don't. Well, you know, I mean, I can play Malton Barley Blues by Gallagher and Lyle, or whatever, whatever figuration it was then. Um, but, oh, you know, get us a mandolin. So they, they, got a mand they got a D'Angelico mandolin that was magical. And I think the guy who lent it thought he was lending it to Eric. So I had to take this thing. And then the, one of the first songs we had to learn was My Father's Eyes. And I'm going, oh, man, this, you know, I can, I can strum three chords on the mandolin. So even on, even on the night, I had a diagram. So you'll see a bit of paper on the floor with, with triangles and triads of different shapes for the, for the mandolin part. Uh, and it was only because it was such a great mandolin that I could play it. It, it, it was fairly easy to play. Subsequently, I had to play other mandolins live and, and uh, it never kind of worked out. But that was, that was a big moment. That was one moment I never slept. Next, he said, you play harmonica? I don't know. Oh, well, what do you want about? I can suck and blow something. And uh, this is the day before the, the run-through. Uh, so, well, okay, what, what, harmonica, right, we got one. So we got one and a harness. Uh, and I've never played with a harness. And, and we put the harness on. And you can see it. There's a special edition of, uh, of Unplugged you can buy from the run-through. And, uh, and I'm thinking, Ooh, what's going to happen now? And and the mama baby down bound of San Francisco. And it comes to the solo and I go like that. And the harmonica flies out. And that was my run through. The next thing, next time I had to play it was on, on the show. Come on, Andy. Oh, no, man. You, hear, you, hear, you, you say at the end, never again. Again, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And, I, and I meant never again. It was, um, but it was such a wonderful time. It was such a tragic time in, in, in certain ways because we just come back from Japan where he uh, helped out George Harrison. So it was Eric's band back in George mm -hmm. and I was invited to be in that band. Um, which was an honour. Although George did tell me, <laughs> we were having a meal after one of the one of the gigs. He said, "Well, Andy wasn't the first. So there were seven other. Andy was seventh, you know." <laughs> and I'm going, "Oh, George, thanks very much." And he said, "Well, you might have been seventh, Andy, but you were the right one." Oh, yeah. uh, he was a great man. He was a great company. Very funny. Um, I loved I loved being in his company. I could never shake off the fact he was a Beatle. Um, but uh, he made me feel really comfortable. We got on. We got on really well. How did that feel playing with the Beatle? It's not just playing. We went to Japan with the Beatle, who'd not been there since 1964, maybe seven, somewhere around that time. It was mayhem. Tokyo Dome, 50,000 people. Next night, Tokyo Dome, 50,000 people. I, we, you know, we went. We went over Japan with George and Georgie, Georgie, Georgie and Erica, <laughs> Georgie and Erica. Um, yeah, I'm playing those songs. Playing those songs, man. 
so beautiful. He, yeah, he was a lovely man. Um, and it, it had not been maybe, I don't know how many months after Connor had died with, with Eric, so it was, it was, it was on lots of levels it was good. And doing Unplugged was really special too because it was Unplugged. Um, and it was Eric playing. And how was that leading up to the, to the concert? I, I heard somewhere Eric uh, said that you you didn't get all the credit you deserve because no, I got no. <laughs> in in the in like like leading up to the concert. No, you, you went to his house. Yes, it did. And, we, and you drank a cup of tea, lots did. of lots yeah. of tea. Yeah, lots of tea. And he said you were like the, the scholar. I uh, I only actually there was one song. He phoned me up at one point before we got to his house. In fact, the concert for George. I spent a week in his house too doing stuff, and uh, that's something. There's no amount of money you can pay for that. It's not to you come into my house and we will play and we will work on this. There was one song and, he, and it was Malted Milk by Robert Johnson. And there were, no, there were no books out then. There was no DVD on how to play Malted Milk. And I was going, do you really want to, if you really want to do this, I'll, I'll, I'll look into this. Um, and I did look into it and uh, he did want to do it. And he, I, his voice, I love his voice. His version of that is, is pretty special, but that in truth, It's, it's lovely of him to say, but it's all, it was all his. There were all his choices of songs. And I was there the morning when we went for the, I got in there early for the cup of tea and he's sitting there and he did mention, I'm thinking of doing Layla as a bit of a waltz, you know. Layla, yeah, that sounds really good. Because I'd, I'd been on the road trying to play that as well. And you cannot beat the Derek and the Dominoes version. I don't care what you do. I don't care how many people you got in the band. I don't know who care who you've got in the band. Even you know, it doesn't matter how many configurations. Even if you got Derek Trucks, complain a fabulous player and Doyle and all, all the bases are covered. You don't have Jim Gordon. You know, you don't have whatever it was that magic. You know, the Dwayne and that that period and that album. Having said that, of all the albums Eric made. The one I would have wanted to be on was nothing, you know, was from the cradle. That was it. Even above, even above Unplugged, if you said, one, if you, I'll give you one album you can be on. And I'm going, that one, please. He was on fire. On yeah. fire. He's singing. I don't think, don't think there's enough recognition. I think he's, I think he's a great singer. I really do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw him two weeks ago in the Ziggo Dome here in Holland. He, he was, he's not yeah. well, you know, when he started that so I should never, we'd... We opened up for him. He gave my band the, uh, the opening spot at the Albert Hall. Uh, and then I went on to do a third of the middle set with him, you know, sort of unplugged, rebuilt. Yeah, the unplugged, too, yeah. Oh, and fabulous. It was so good to see everybody. And then it finished. And then a couple of days later, we went in the studio to record something with Eric. Um, a song called Leave the Candle by Gary Brooker, which he wanted to record. We get there at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, he walks in and... <clears throat> feeling a little bit gruff, didn't feel too good. And someone said, well, you better take a test. And he did, and he was positive. And from that moment on, the studio said, you should leave. Hmm. You have to leave. We had two days booked to do this song. So eventually, he did have to leave. But they said, as you're all here, if we shut the door, you can do what you have to do for today, and then you'll have to go. <laughs> Cut a long story in that I, I forgot what they call wet macular degeneration in my eye and I had an injection in it and it was blood red and black and I couldn't really see through it. But I had to read the lyric to this song with a patch over my eye, singing this song, uh, you know, putting down a bass line for, for when, it, when Eric would come back. So we went home and then we were meant to go to um, Zurich because he gave us that first week of Zurich, Milan and Bologna. Just getting out the shower to go to the airport. Don't bother. He's got COVID. He's still testing positive. It's not on. There was a break. He then did that fight, which he finished uh, you know, about a week ago or something. And he, he hadn't recovered. No. He had not recovered. I, I, I was t and it, and he's, he's not well now, too. He's got a sore throat and something else now. No. Um, so it took it out of him. Yeah. Uh, so he might not have been. Still, even with that in mind, I thought his voice was fabulous. It oh, was the first you. time for me seeing him mm. in real life because mm. normally I don't go to shows because I have to play myself. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was amazing. I thought he was his, his voice was still going strong. He did. He did get. He started to enjoy it a bit more. Uh, and the lurgy, the dreaded lurgy, was disappearing a bit. And then he got home, and then he got a cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, he's, you know, he's, he has neuropathy, so he's 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 got so um, uh, medical issues. Yeah. Um, so. 
Yeah, that's, that has something to do with his hands, right? To do with the whole, whole body, not yeah. just his hands. Yeah. When we did um, the album, um, I still do. When we recorded that with Glyn Johns, mm. um, he would come in, his hands were just blistered. And he would sit around and then we'd get and put the track and he'd play. He'd play his arse off. Yeah. And then he'd sit back down and it was like, uh, I love that album. Yeah. You know, I don't, there's a song on there called I'll Be All Right. I'll be all right. Oh, man, I love it. In fact, I play it before my gigs. It's, on, it's one of the songs I play on a CD because uh -huh. I like it that much. Talking about Glyn Jones, he was very important for you, right? <laughs> Bloody hell. Well, the list. I work with a lot of people. And if you drew that tree, where do they all come back? Where's Linda Ronstadt? Where's Stevie Nicks? Where's David Crosby? Where's Joe Satriani? Oh, you know, certainly with Eric as well. I was there staying in Glyn's house um, when Eric recorded um, Slow Hand, that, that album. So I'd go in every day to sit in the control room. Uh, and Backless, I was there when he did Backless too. Um, there when Pete Town, when I worked on The Who, and I worked on The Who because I was staying with Glyn, and Pete said, tell Andy to come down and do a bit of singing. Uh, so I did, so, who are you? Who, who, who? You're singing on that. Oh, yeah, and I've done about six tracks on that album. And then I play guitar on It's Hard, another album. I was staying at Glyn's, and, yeah. uh, and Pete was in America being dried out, and they wanted someone to play along. And so it's me, Roger Daltrey, John Entwistle, and Kenny. So for three weeks, I pretended to be Pete. Then Pete came back. <laughs> And he, and he walks in the studio, and it, it's a bit like there are two players that it's tricky to be a second guitar player for. Jeff Beck, which I've also done that as well, and, um, and Pete. And the moment Pete starts playing, it's pointless playing along with him, because no one plays an A chord bigger than Pete. Yeah. The attack is just phenomenal. Yeah. So there's a bit of a gap later on, and you think, hmm, if there's a gap, then there's meant to be a gap. And eventually we went for a playback to, to listen to what was going on. And I looked at Pete and I said, uh, I think, because Glyn had a tennis court. And I said, I think I'll go and play tennis. And he went, yes, all right, Andy, OK. And I did, because it wasn't needed. It just wasn't needed. The one song I was involved with, with John Entwistle, my guitar playing's on that. But no, it wasn't needed, you he's, know. He's too big of a guitar player. To, he fills every space. It's, uh, well, put it this way. If, if he hasn't filled the space, it's because there should be a space there. Um, I did play <laughs> with, with, with Jeff um, when we did uh, the Arms tour, but I sang. Um, and then I, another concert I did sort of play 12, 12 string. It's, it's bizarre because I, I, uh, I did play with Joe Satriani, you know, I did live album with, with Joe Satriani. Whoa. And uh, with Manu Cachet and, and Nathan in the studio with Glyn. And I remember the music magazine article to Joe, the first question the guy asked him was, why? Why Andy Fair with hello? Because um, even to me it seems bizarre, because I can't think as fast as he can play. And, and I'm, the I'm really in, fast. There's a, there's a song on that album called Killer Bee. And it goes something like this. On that one note is my note. That was me. That's oh, nice. That's nice. <laughs> I, had, I had some good tones on my guitars. You know, I had some fabulous guitars that I could add a colour to it. And, and Joe was the most lovely man, and uh, I can't thank him enough for allowing me to be in the presence of something that I just. God. And how did you how did you fill up the space he left you? Is is that like did you go for like soundscapes or did soundscapes definitely? But he controlled me, you know. It's it's if we get in there, he'd be straight over to me on the song, right? Yeah. And if I've been using, well, you don't use that finger. Oh, all right. Well, Sorry about that. And then and then I'm doing this. You go, we do it. The man's pretty, so, he's so a control I, freak. So the the days would go on. It would start about. 10, 12 o'clock, and then about 7 o'clock at night, then Glyn would come in and he said, look, Joe, just let him play. And he'd go, all right. And then we play and then we get the track. Yeah. And then, but the next day you think, we cracked it now. He's not going to, comes in, right, Andy. Right, get the 7 o'clock. Glyn would come in. Why don't you just let him play? A, a fabulous studio um, in uh, Lucas Valley. Man, it was like the most fabulous time there. 
And Glyn's just a fantastic producer. Uh, Is he still busy at the moment? He's not been, uh, except he did do the Peter Green celebration concert. Mm -hmm. um, he's now just recorded um, Christine McVie with um, Songbird, one of her songs he's put an orchestra on, and that's coming out soon. And apparently, it's delicious, and I can't wait to hear that. But yeah, no, he's he's um, yeah, he's got a couple. I can't say anything, but he's got about two two big things coming up. Oh yeah. Plus the fact he was a a main figure in the Get Back thing, promoting. I particularly liked his style, his clothes, and his haircut. That I was met, really sweet. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. You go. Yeah. 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 And I only, I, believe it or not, I've not seen it. But I've seen clips. Yeah. And the one clip I saw was George's candy striped suit. But the humour, that's what I got. Because I saw Let It Be in, in the cinema when it came out. I walked out of there going, oh, bloody hell. Um, this, and the Vox column, or the guitars. It was like, and the definition, the film, you know, that definition that, they, that Peter had got on that. Oh, my camera, it was, yeah, very special. It was very special. I, I've, I've seen it all. I've seen all the, the hours. It, it cost me a couple of days. I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the thing is, what, what, what was so special was, like, you are there when, like, Let It Be is born. Yeah. And everyone is, like, going around doing their own stuff, and it's Paul McCartney just sitting there and just composing what, what seems to be the, the, the best song ever written. I know, I know. Yeah. I, and I did hear a, see a little clip of George doing uh, Old Brown Shoe, I think it was, and uh, and he's mumbling <laughs> like you do. <laughs> How was that with the unplugged sessions? Because there were cameras there too. All the rehearsals yeah. were were yeah. taped. Is there more than it has been released? Do, do you know? No, that? no. There'll be the day before and the concert there was there was none through the general rehearsals no there was nothing and there was no documentary no. style interviews no nope. uh there might have been with with eric but we weren't involved with that um and unfortunately there weren't there weren't any when we rehearsed for george for japan and that would have been fabulous yeah that really was the rehearsals were just <sighs> from the cradle that also had a rehearsal oh yeah no uh, that was that was filmed But we also recorded that album once before that one that actually came out. We had uh, one with uh, Richie Haywood. We did a whole album with, with Engineer, but Eric didn't like it. Oh. The only song that's retained from that particular version of From the Cradle was How Long. Oh, serious. And I love, it's another song. I like it. Like, any chance we can play that again? <laughs> Why? Because I like it. You know, can we do it again? Because he's, my right, time to go now. Oh, can we just... Just do it again. You said, well, all right, we'll do it again, because Andy wants us to do it again. Yeah, I do, because I like it. Yeah, that's also with... Uh, uh, one side of the line. Uh, Nobody, uh, uh, it's, uh, after 30 years, I still put it on repeat. Well, I, I, for me, running on faith, too. These are things I don't hear anymore. Yeah. Um, and we were there. Yeah. We were there, and... Oh, God, it was so, it was so full. Did you fe feel it was special at the well, moment? Well... It was special because I was, you know, I was invited to be there. It, 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 it wasn't like an extra special. The special of being there was big enough. I was like, clap them for goodness sake. You know, when we rehearsed for George uh, in Bray for, for the tour, the Japanese tour, first day's rehearsal, we break for lunch. Now, if a song was mentioned, I, I knew those songs because I, I had no work. So I learned everything. So if a question was asked, and I go, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever song it was, blah, 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 yeah, that, that's what it is. And Eric go, hmm, because Eric, Eric had a life. <laughs> you know, he was busy, he was doing things. Yeah. So, he, so there maybe wasn't the same focus on learning all the songs and all the bits. Yeah. Well, I did. We break for lunch, and as we're going through, he comes up to me and he says, um, will you join us at the Albert Hall uh, for the for the tournament? Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I will. Yes, yes, I will. But I am going to tell my wife. So if this isn't true, we're in, we're in real time. No, it's fine. We'll shake on it. All right? We shook on it. And I phoned my wife then. I said, we just got the job with Eric Clapton. And that's, uh, so it was big. Everything was big. Yeah. But not bigger because of it's uh, unplugged was special. The whole thing was special. Yeah. Yeah, in, in the moment in time yeah. 
with with the death of his son mm, yeah. and leading up to that yeah. and it was like music is such a healer you feel it throughout the album it's it's there's it's, a proper cho his choice of songs it's like him giving me credit for anything no, no. malted milk maybe no definitely but the rest absolutely him s selected all the songs and i thought all the right songs too what i find very special is when i listen to the rehearsal tapes and i, I hear you guys play Layla, and how it's eventually put on tape during the MTV performance, that's like the, the 10 to 20% extra okay. magic. Yep. There is, there is funny, there is, um, I've listened to, there, there's one version usually of a great song, um, whether it's Muddy Waters, uh, Uchi Kuchi Man, whatever it is, if you listen to any outtakes, all of a sudden, one take, especially in, the, in those days, the way they recorded, you know, open mics, mics would feed into whatever, and all the interplay of all of, of Muddy's band, or when they played with um, Jimmy Rogers, Chicago Bound was a, an album that Eric introduced me to. You just gotta listen to every little turnaround, every little harmonica lick is perfect on those takes. You listen to an outtake, and it's, not, it's, never, it's never bad, but there is that, like there's that 20% more that happens on the one. And what happens with me, and if I'm in the studio, is if we do get to that moment of that's the one, I always go past it. And again, go a little further, and then someone taps you on the shoulder and goes, it was there, you know, and you go, right, yeah, you're right. But I can't stop at it. I can only go back to it. I have to pass it. Let's go, I know I've done everything now. I've exhausted feel, this. You have to feel like there's yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's empty. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, come on, back. We had it. And with Glyn Johns, that was usually very early on on a take. You go, that's it. And you go, no, it's not. No, we need to do it again. Oh, well, you carry on doing it. I'm off home. <laughs> yeah. Great, great recordings of, yeah. of Glyn's. You know, my, al my albums, but two albums I did with him. Yeah, and I love them. And what about the, the, the microphone techniques used during the unplugged? Because it's really unplugged. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. there's, there's no... Uh, DI nope. involved nothing. I didn't have. Um, did I you have? Uh, did you have proper monitoring? Yeah, no, there was proper monitoring there, but I didn't have any guitars. All, all the guitars I used <laughs> were borrowed. The uh, the Ramirez that I eventually did play myself and Eric went to a, a classical guitar shop, both of us together, uh, to buy guitars for unplugged for Tears in Heaven, you know. And, yeah. And it's Lonely Stranger and stuff like that. So, and we get into the shop, and he's pulling this one down. He puts his foot on. Boom, boom. It's another one. And I think he bought about three. Now, I've just got into this job, and I'm not financially. I'm not too too well off. You know, I've been working. I, I do lots of charity stuff because I'm not working. So I'm always on the big gigs because oh, Andy's available, right? <laughs> so I, I find this one, and I think it's expensive, but I think I can. About two thousand pounds. You know, a lot of money for me. Yeah, yeah, I've got one. Do you find another one, Andy? No, no, no. Just, just, this one will be all right. So he's gone out. He's paid for his, and he, you know, they put him in the taxi, and he's waiting for me. And I've gone to pay, and my card has been rejected. No. So look, there must be. There's, there's got to be an issue there. You know, I'm rehearsing. There is. Will be money in the bank. So eventually, I get into the taxi. And uh, what happened? I said, uh, there was an issue with uh, my credit card. He said nothing, you know. And we then eventually get to the years and we're sitting down and everyone's there and he said, you'll never believe it. <laughs> they rejected his bloody credit card in front of everyone. Anyway, I did go back the next day. Uh, we did sort it out and I had the guitar. And then my friend, my really good friend, Alan Rogan, uh, he lent me this uh, Super 300 or Gibson, um, the Martin was, was Eric, and I still think to this day it was his best Martin. It's been sold. Yeah. He, he will disagree, but I won't. Um, so that was his Martin. <laughs> the mandolin belonged to some guy who thought was selling it, was lending it to Eric. Um, and the Ramirez, yes, I, di I, did, I did buy it. And I've still got it, and I've never played it on anything else. That's so nice yeah. to hear those stories behind, because you think, well, those are the guitars. The guys own it, but there's a whole story behind it. Um, and the one I've got now, I play, I play an Eric Clapton Martin now, uh, and I got that when he, 
when he put the one I used to play, the one for Unplugged, when he pulled that into the auction and I thought, oh, and that's it, I'm going to get fired now. In fact, the, the truth is, on every tour we ever did, keeping I was there for 13 years, yeah. every tour that finished, if only I'd known, I kept thinking I was going to get fired on every tour. I, man, the amount of people that went by when I was in the band, the yeah. different players, the great players too, in and out, and I'm still there, and then that would finish, I think, oh, no, I'll be gone now. And I was working with Roger Waters at the same time. Yeah. How was that? Fantastic. I mean, not, not for me, he's... Um, He's a real good, you know, Eric's a real good friend. Roger's a real good friend. Uh, I, I got involved with people that, uh, yeah, I was employed by them, and then we just became really good friends. Yeah. Are you still seeing, seeing them in private? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I spe I'll speak, speak to Roger in a day or so. He's getting ready um, to go back out on the road. Uh, and I left in 2007. Finished the Dark Side of the Moon tour, and I and I released my own album, and I and I realized, and I left Eric in two, 2004 because I realized if I wanted to play, I was going to have to do it. I was 65 when I st started thinking about it, yeah. and playing with other people is fabulous. I mean, I had 24 years of playing Floyd songs and 13 years of playing Eric songs, um, but I had to break out, and. Um, and that was it. That was me, me moving on. And th when, the next tour for Roger was The Wall. Because uh, I'd done The Wall in 1990. Um, now, that was, that was interesting. Um, but I was mainly the bass player on that. Um, and then he phoned up and said, come on, Andy. He said, uh, The Wall. And I go, Roger, there was very little for me to do in Dark Side of the Moon. Mm -hmm. uh, for my son and I had a grandson. And I'm sitting in the back of a stadium in Chile or something, watching other people play. And I'm going... Because Roger had two other guitar players. I wasn't a guitar player. I, I would do a bit. I used to get a solo in money, and then that was taken away. And then eventually I was just strumming and watching two other people play. And I went, I want to play. Uh, and he said, no, come on. He said, we'll find something for you to do. And I went, no, I can't, Roger. I can't. I've got to play. And I've been, yeah. luckily, he's flown me out a couple of times to see the shows, Copenhagen and, and in, in, in America, yeah. to, to go out and just hang. And, yeah. Uh, uh, and watch, and it is pretty spectacular. It's it's very political now. It's very political, mm -hmm. but visually it was always big. The first thing I did was pros and cons of hitchhiking. Oh yeah. Now that it was three full-sized cinema screens back projected. I never seen anything like it in my life. Mm -hmm. I go out for a sound check in the Radio City Music Hall. There's rain, there's dogs, there's a jet going over, there's the London Symphony Orchestra on, and there's this three, you know, like a big uh, arcade machine. <laughs> then a naked woman and some breasts come up. and he, We were good. Yeah. We were bloody good. And I go, I get it. I swear, you've got to see the show. You just, even if you're not a fan, you've got to come and see this thing. And it grew. I learned. I didn't know much about Pink Floyd in truth. Because in 1967, the first tour I did with my band, Amen Corner, Pink Floyd were on the bill, Jimi Hendrix was top of the bill, so, and two shows a night. Um, so I would watch the Floyd. I'd go, what the hell's going on here? The song that they started with was um, Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. Became one of my favorite songs to play. At the time when I saw them then, I'm going, what the bloody hell's this? Where's the backbeat? Where's the backbeat? It was something mm -hmm. completely different. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they weren't very approachable. Everybody on that tour was approachable, but the Floyd weren't approachable. Serious? Oh, yes, sir. I don't know, I'm sure they were approachable to each other. Um, and I, when I met Roger years later, uh, after the Arms tour, hmm. someone had suggested when Eric had left, but needed two guitar players, I would not replacing Eric, you should try Andy. So he rang me up. Keeping in mind, we'd not spoken, well, I was told if we ever spoke in 1967. Hello, Andy. Yeah, Roger Waters, yeah? And I'm going, yeah, and I'm trying to figure Roger Waters. Yeah, I know Pink Floyd. They were, then the anonymous thing was that they, they, they loved it. He said, uh, would you come up and, uh, and uh, come to my studio and, and we can meet up and talk and let's see how we get on? And I went, well, yeah, why not? And I did go up and we did get on because I mentioned that to all. And I Difficult. Open it up. I, yeah, how, how, yeah, you know, no, you weren't too friendly at all. We didn't, we, you know, we didn't associate with you at all. And our manager at the time, who was a bit of a villain, had gone into a bit of an issue with Roger, threatened to break his 
Um, so he remembered that, and I remembered other things. And we just, to this day, I've been in, I've been in situations with him where I've nearly died laughing. I mean, people, most of my friends would go, oh, I don't like Roger, he's up, you know, whatever, he's up this and he's up that. But we laugh. I wouldn't yeah. have been there 23 years, I'm telling you, if it didn't, I'd have gone. Yeah, yeah. I'd have gone easy, but no, I loved it. I just had to go in the end, that's all. How do you stay fit on the guitar? You've been playing for, for years and years and years. How do you get yourself from not getting injured in fingers, arms? My fingers are always in now on the soundtrack because after last night, you're going, oh. But, you know, as soon as the, old, the bell goes up, the lights go on. You know, half a glass of wine goes down and you go, come on, <laughs> we're on, you know. And do you still, after all these years, have like a practice routine? Or? No, I, no, I play all the time. It's not, not, I'm, not, um, I'm not gifted. I have to, I have to work at it. Yeah. I'm, I'm good now. I'm good. But I'm 73. For God's sake, I've been doing it over 50 years. Of course I'm good. I wish I'd been good when I was 27. If you could go back in time, what would you give yourself for tips, like to be that good at 26? No, no, I, I, well, I, I wouldn't be able to do that because that's a, there, there are those, there's your Eric Clapton's and your Jimi Hendrix and there's the rest of us, whoever the rest of us are. Uh, it's like in tennis, there's a McEnroe, you know, who's, who's not a guy who had to practice at all. He was just a natural. Um, We've got a couple now, um, but I'm, I'm a guy who has to practice and uh, there's no tip I could give myself. The one thing I, I wish I could have learned was enjoy, enjoy your bloody time. Stop thinking about getting fired. Stop, just get on with it. Was know? that always something like above the head, like I'm going to get fired? Yeah, no, always. Listen, it's um, uh, because you never knew, you never got told. Uh, at the end of a tour, you weren't told, if, if the next tour was three months later, you weren't told at the end of that tour, you had to wait. And then I'd go, well, because I, I worked with a guy called Chris Rea on the Road to Hell tour. And he was going to do another tour. And I phoned up Roger Forrester, another guy I speak to a lot now, Roger's, Roger's old manager. Um, and I say, um, uh, you know, what's, what's happening? Um, uh, oh, this... Uh, Oh, no, I'm nothing, not yet. I said, but I've been offered Chris Rea. And he said, well, you should take it, boy. Oh, well, so you hold on, you know. And Chris is going, well, you, you know, I need, a, I need a yes or a no. Yeah. Well, um, that, that happened with the David Crosby thing, too, you know. And I, I nearly ended up on that, but I ended up on the Blues tour, thinking I was fired. That's another story. In fact, we were fired. We were all fired after the MTV Awards in America. Yeah, we did the uh, doubler with... Elton John, Elton John, Eric, and it was just a tour he didn't take to. Stadiums, uh, keeping in mind it's tears in heaven time. Mm. Uh, you get to the arena, it's, it's like, and you go, ba da dum, da da dum, and I shot the shot, down, 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 no one's listening. <laughs> you know, I, I mentioned it many times. Greg Fillingains, fabulous keyboard player, he came into the dressing room after, after one of them and he went, man! Fantastic. And he went, yeah, it's just like the Beatles. And Eric went, yeah, just like the Beatles. And that was it. Yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to, it, it was the beginnings of the, from the cradle, you know, that's, that was the next album. Yeah. I just, he said, I might do some work. We're all in the restaurant, you know, and he said, I think you all need to um, think about getting some other work because I'm not going to be working now. Uh, might do something with Jimmy Vaughan. Big fan of Jimmy Vaughan. Great. Um, uh, so, you know, on your way, so I, and I assumed, I'm done. Next day I was in the studio with Stevie Nicks, so I had stuff to do yeah. while I was there. So it occupied my mind and I went, you know what, final release. I thought I was going to get fired and I've been fired. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I only found out I wasn't fired. So <laughs> It's always, it's always a, a roller coaster ride. Well, Roger Forrester's one of his famous state was, statements is, it's not my job to tell you when you're not working. And you kind of go, yeah, I do, I, I get that, but, but, yeah, but, and it is a famous statement. So yeah. And it is, it's not his job to tell him when you're not working. It's his job to tell him when you are working. Yeah. Well, exactly. am I working then? Don't not know. Sure, boy. Yeah. Not sure, yeah. you know. Yeah. And if, if Eric or Roger would, would call you and say, okay, we're, bring, we're bringing the band back together, would you do it? Uh, I would if I could, if I could. I, I'm, with my band now, we're booked September on. 
it's done. It's a done deal. If he came now, um, yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, it, it, it's been hinted by both of them, and and they both know that I'm. I need to play. Yeah. It's like when I went to see the S and M tour. He said, "Come on, I come up," and I go, "No, it's nothing. It's, you know, it's, um, it's just." Not, and it was fabulous to listen to those songs. Not me. I wondered what I'd feel like, but it was because after playing them for so many years, when I thought that band's good. Yeah. The theatre is bigger than the, the the band in truth for for me. Yeah. And you put the both together. Um, he's not going to have a bad musician. Eric's not going to have a bad musician in the band. No. It doesn't matter who's in the band back in Eric. It's a different, you know, they're all going to be good. They might be different, but they'll be good. Um, and, and Doyle, I, I love Doyle. We, you know, because myself and Doyle, we toured with Roger Waters. I auditioned Doyle, oh, yeah. you know, for the Roger Waters tour when I was in America. He came in the hotel room, he had a Lightning Hopkins tattoo on his, and I went, I think it's a done deal. <laughs> What I really like about him in the band is because he plays Gibsons a lot, yep. and that's a really nice contrast. Yep, it is, and he's 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 got a real English sensibility about him. Honestly, I mean, at the time I've spent instantly, we got on, and yeah. uh, it was great great to be back in his company and with Nathan too, to to be in that band. Um, my real connection with those bands was with Steve Gadd, because. Mm -hmm. I'm in a band, or was in a band with Steve, the Gadabouts. Uh, we made three albums. Yeah. Uh, had the most fabulous time. What an amazing drummer. Oh, and uh, he, he was my buddy. Yeah. We ran everywhere. Wherever we were, seven o'clock, let's go. Let's get out. Let's do something. So we go run, come back straight for coffee, and with me, with a, with a cake, and you're thinking, that's the wrong thing to do. <laughs> Just don't run and don't eat the cake, you know, it's because yeah. you're going to have to run because you're eating the cake. Yeah. But yeah, we got on really well. We are really good friends. And now with, with the, the, the tour you, you are on uh, now, you're doing a small uh, small tour. You, you played Belgium? Well, yesterday, but first time I played, I'm 73. I've never Seriously? been in Belgium. Wow. It's ridiculous. And Zutemir now is um, third time in that the second time I was ill. Oh. Um, and, and we had to cancel it, and I had okay. to go home. Um, and then we came back and played it in the snow. Um, but no, we're finding it hard. We we do okay in the UK, hmm. but we're not we're not getting much work elsewhere. Um, and it's it's the nature of the fr my franchise. Hmm. Um, it's got nothing to do with who I played with. It doesn't sell a no. ticket for me. No, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm still out there, and people still come. I can yeah. do maybe 40, 50 dates at the end of the year. We're doing all right now. We'll do a couple of festivals in the summer. And it's where I am. Are you going to do like a new album or something? I've or already s done. I've already done. I, in, in, in the lockdown, I realized a bit of money from one, my, my pension because nothing was going on. And Rockfield Studios, I don't know if you buy Rockfield Studios, it's a famous yeah. studio. And uh, Kingsley, the guy who owns the place, we were having a conversation. I went into Rockfield in 1965. You know, when it was a potato loft in the very right. beginnings. And we're talking. He said, what are you doing? And I said, well, no, nothing at the moment, you know. He said, well, why don't you come down? You can have a week in the studio for nothing. You know, that's like Oasis, Queen, yeah. uh, Stone Roses. The list goes on of all people who made famous number one album. Come down, have a week for nothing. So I make demos at home. I've got a little Boss 1180 machine, eight track mm -hmm. machine, uh, and a drum machine. And I love my demos. They're in mono. They're badly recorded, but they're bloody good. And it's hard to recreate them. But the only thing I really can't stand is the drum machine. So um, I had a word with Paul, our drummer. I said, look, if you come at Rockville, I've got a free week there. These are the patterns from my drum machine. And I'll play everything else and I'll sing. Come down. So I had the one week, and then I realized I needed another week. And he offered it again for nothing. I said, no, I'll pay. And then I had one more week after that. The album's finished. Um, It's um, when it's going to see the light of day. It, yeah, it will. It will, but it's not. It's not up for judgment from from a record. It's it's me. Yeah. You can't. Someone you can't play to a record company guy and goes, well, you need to have done this, Andy. No, this is it. Take it or bugger it. It's not happening. This is it. You know. Sometimes I've got two middle eights. I've got too many choruses because I like choruses. But I I played the bass because I've had 24 years of playing the bass. And I love playing the bass. Uh, did all the harmonies, did everything, played all the guitars. It's a fantastic guitar sound. I mean, 
this guy, the engineer that I eventually ended up just by chance meeting, and we got on really well, he had a Ferragraph ta um, tape recorder. Plug me into that tape. Man, yeah. I love a dirty sound, and this is a sound from heaven for me. Yeah, what, what kind of guitar did you plug into it? Well, no, I, I, a couple of guitars uh, I plugged into it. I, the, the night that I played, the night arena, which I really love, it's my... It's not my favorite guitar. It's my favorite guitar to play, but the one I really like is the little airline that I play with one pickup. Small guitar, dirty sound. Love it. Absolutely. Nice. And it, I love the color of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and I've got a 350 Gibson that I, that I play a Lightning Hawkins song on, which I'll do tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. So I've got a couple of nice guitars, but this, this engineer, I said, I want, I'm in Rockfield. I'm in this room because this room is known. Yeah. As was Stax, as was um, Willie Mitchell uh, with High and, uh, and Muscle Shores. The rooms are important. Yeah. You know, lately people, you know, when I've walked, you need that, and you get your computer out. No, you do put some foam up there, bit of wood over there. No, what the hell with it. Give me the room. I want to hear that room. Yeah. And the end, so I got an album where, but I know I've got a bit of that room in it. And are you going to release it yourself, or are you like shopping for labels? Well, we're going to shop for a label. A label did come through today. Um, whether it, a label came through straight away, one of the big labels, and that was biz that's bizarre because I'm not, you know, and they, oh yeah, got the phone call. Yeah, they're enthusiastic. They want they want to do a book. They want to do a best of. They want to, because I recorded every day as well on, on GoPro, so the whole oh, yeah. album's you know boringly will have to be sliced up. Um, so I've got that as well. And then it eventually, daylight and common sense came through and they backed out. Uh, but now someone's come through, to, through today, and if they don't, if they don't go for the, the appropriate thing, I'll just put it on Facebook and sell it, you know, the, the band's Facebook. Because um, I'm, not, I'm not for listening to anybody. Times have changed, you know. It's, uh, you used to really need a record label to put something out, but... It is possible. It is possible. What happened to me in the early days, in the band Aiming Corner, we were successful because the people we were involved with were villains and wanted us to be successful, and we were. We didn't get any money, but we were successful. When I joined A&M, my solo albums, if you look at the slice of the cake that I got, it's about that. Yeah. Yes, I got hoardings on... Cromwell Road in London. I got the front of magazines. I, uh, you know, they, they fabulous album covers, and uh, I did this promotion and that promotion. I'm still paying back for my first album, Spider Drive. Yeah, yeah, it's like, but but their slice of the cake was bigger, and I only ever got something if I gave most of it away. Yeah, that's the way I looked at it. And now my last maybe three three albums with the Lowriders, we gave nothing away. And we got nothing back. <laughs> That's the yeah. truth of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Get, no, we want it. No, we're just going to release it. No, you can't. It's a good deal for us. It's got to be a good deal for somebody else. Yeah. The point is, at which point it tips over in too much of a bloody good deal for them. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, but, but when they see that there's money to be, uh, to be made, they're there. You know? Yeah, but the, the, the truth is, there's <laughs> not much money to be made with me. It's, it's okay. You know, I, I make a living. I don't... When the band's playing, we don't lose money. Yeah, um, important. Yeah, and that's and, and if we keep doing that. I'll keep playing. Yeah, because I'm enjoying playing now more than I ever did. Don't get me wrong; I had a great time with with Roger and a great time with with, with Eric, uh, and all the other tours I did. Um, but playing what I want to play. Yeah, in in the band that I'm in, uh, and I've got a great band. Great, and a great band isn't all about the playing. So you've got to have the right people. Yeah. Because most of the time he's off the road, and most of the time he's uncomfortable. So you got to be, you know, got to happy in that environment. It's like a family. And I and I've got, God, I'm so lucky. Yeah, yeah. We we keep losing people. <laughs> you know, uh, good because of the, the market forces. Yeah. Um, you but, get new people back. Oh yeah, no, Rich is coming back. Rich, he's with James, but um, yeah. Uh, these dates he couldn't, but he's coming back for for September, so he'll be back with us. But Dave will. You know, with Tom Jones, and uh, and he'll stay there. And Dave was, uh, it was issues. Um, we weren't making enough. You know, we the rest of us would we'd live where we are. Mm, yeah. But Dave would go, "This is not good enough. You know, why are we playing here? Yeah. You know, we'd only make we're making less than the minimum wage. Whereas, 
I wouldn't have balanced it out and worked out that I was making less than the, I, that's what I'm making. And I'd leave it at that. You accept it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but no, I spoke to Dave the other day because he came to town with Tom and uh, he got some tickets for some friends too. So it's, oh, it was really nice. good. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, there's one more thing. I would like to thank you for your amazing inspiration, for your, your contribution to my favorite album of all times. It was the, the album that for me uh, made me start playing guitar start harassing my guitar teacher i want to play before you accuse me you know yeah man but for me the joy of san francisco bay blues the joy of nobody knows you when you're yeah. down I mean, it's, and and malted milk it's like i say his voice i just a lonely stranger yeah i love that song yeah it's it, nice. it doesn't get much traction but whenever i hear it i go yeah and my father's eye again he has written some fabulous songs yeah um You get to why play River it, of Tears. That's another one he thought. Why was uh, My Father's Eyes it's and not, Circus yeah. not on no. the original? Why was that? I don't know. I, I don't think he felt... With all songs, if you're writing them, there's a point where you go, that's it, it's finished. Right? Yeah. That's it. The number of times I've either sent a demo that I've done to the band, knowing, that's not, I haven't really finished it yet. Yeah. Uh, and I think that could have been it. I think, I think so. Because Circus, yeah. again... A lovely That's song. Amazing. It's it's funny playing playing with Eric. It's, it's a few tricks, a few things, a few chord things that he does that nobody else does. Playing with Pete, there's a few, you know, because I toured psychedelic with Pete in uh, America in 1993. Um, and you go, you know, there's a way he plays, and there's a way he does a couple of other things, you know. And, and I learn. Yeah. Um, you learn the, the catalog of songs in with Van Morrison, about six months with Van, and you learn the catalog of songs and the way he writes and the way Eric writes and the way Pete writes. Yeah. And then you go back and you you write your own pinching little bits from, from everybody. But how do you, as a as a rhythm guitar player, what what is like the, the, the vibe you're in when you're like sitting next to Eric Clapton and you go like, okay, I have to like make him shine? No, 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 the, the whole oh. deal is get in it. Get, get in, in the, it. Get in with the drummer. It's all, it was me and Steve really was the, was the lock for me. Yeah. Um, and, and focus on who you're playing for completely. Work, work for that person like you want someone to work for you. That was my deal. I'd stood out front before, you know, with my own band and certainly in the 60s. So, so I'd done that. And out there, compared to being back there, it's, you know, it's like the, the gap is enormous. I could play, I could play with Eric in the band, I could play with Roger, with a temperature of 103 or whatever. It, I'd have no worries except the worries of whether I could play or not. Am I selling tickets? How can I, the singer's syndrome. Yeah. I'm, 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 Paul Carrick's a real good friend of mine too. In fact, myself, Paul and Nick Lowe, we have a little trio. Um, or we did have, we don't have any more. Um, and it's that, people don't realize the, the singer's thing, you know, don't yeah. want to see anybody, you know, you end up, a bit like I would use with gloves on. No, no, because yeah. if you get a call, if, yeah, yeah. If, if I go to sing, there's a couple of songs I sing in the set now that are well known by people that know me. Yeah. You can't change them like a rock and roll song. No. Eh, eh, it's got to be that. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I know. I know, man. But, the, the singer sign syndrome. It, yeah. Uh, especially in, in the fall, it's like, no, I'm not. I stopped shaking hands before COVID, you know? It was like... Uh, I will wear this for the rest of my life. It's yeah. nothing to do with COVID. No. You know, you go, I used to go and get my coffee in the morning, which was a ritual that me and Steve would do. And, and the girl or the fellas behind the counter, and it's like... <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I card cash, and you're going, oh, God, no. <laughs> I didn't ever want to deal with the contactless cards, you know. No. So, no, I'm not doing that. I mean, bloody well, put in my... No, yeah. no, can't, please, yeah, don't, yeah. don't give me money. No money, no yeah. money, yeah. don't. I use my watch for everything now. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But it, uh, so I, I'm with it now, but I'm with it for a generally taking care of things. Just stay out of it if you can, if, if we're on the road. If we're not on the road, it doesn't matter, but... No, exactly. Certainly on the road. I mean, last night was two hours and a bit, and it was... In fact, I had to wear a, another suit for the second half. It was that hot yeah. in that club. It's only 200, but it's a great club. Yeah, yeah, but great. it's really hot in Belgium and in Holland. At the oh, no, it was, unbe it was, we got there and it was hot. And then it got towards the evening and, I, and we had to walk to go and eat. And he, I said, I hope it's a little cooler out there. And he went, no, it's even hotter. Yeah. Oh, man. Andy, thank you very much 
for My your time. My pleasure, Ed. No, it's, 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 I like to talk. I think you can gather that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I am, I'm amazed. I'm just amazed. It's, um, I, I don't get it. I don't get why or how. Um, and that's the good part about it. I yeah. never think about it either. Uh, no. But I am amazed. It's um, one day, I mean, sometimes I wish I was me, if you know what I mean, it's like that. But at the moment, there's always something hanging over going, no, one day, Ma, we're going to be famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day. You still have to have that holy fire. Oh, yeah, no. We, it's, yeah. And one day we'll make the, the one song. It's, it's, you know? it's in the pen. Yeah. It's, 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 one, yeah. I'm just basic. Yeah. I think Neil Young said he was always just, I'm always only just recording the one song, you know, trying to, the same song. But yeah. Uh, yeah, and I guess I am. I'm just waiting to go, no, that's it. I'm yeah. done. That's it. Well, that's yeah. great to hear because I'm 42 now at the moment. And this is the point in the, in the career where, like, I've done a lot of things. I still have enough time. Oh, yeah. Where the fuck <laughs> am I in my career, you know? It's, like, it's, it's an amazing time. So it's good to hear that um, in, in your 70s, there still is, like, the holy fire. Oh, no, for is, me, is no, it's, it'll, never, it'll never change. It was the, it's, it's like if, when you were saying, what do you say to somebody up and coming, a young guitarist? Mm -hmm. I don't say anything to them. They got to say it. Yeah. They've got to be driven. If you're not driven, yeah. my, my grandson, I would teach my grand. they said, teach, would he teach him guitar? I said, yeah, I will. Um, and he, he'd come around, and first thing he wanted to play was Tears in Heaven. And I went, it's too tricky. He said, I want to learn. And he did. And I said, this is really, this boy's got a, you know, a serious, he's left-handed, and I had to teach him right-handed, which, which, which he did learn right-handed. Yeah. And then I went to his mother. I said, well, I, this, he's got it if he wants it. But if, when he goes home, he's not down there picking that guitar up, you can forget it. If he's gone, yeah. we're done. But there has to be something that, like, sparks a fire. Uh, yes, there is something. I mean, I had it. I had it in 1964. I had it when I saw the Rolling Stones. Um, they weren't top of the bill. Mike Sarn and Billy Davis were top of the bill. Um, Jet Harris was on the bill. Uh, the Leroy's, Burn Elliott and the Fenmen. And the Stones were just on that bill. Yeah. Second half, I think they started talking about you. Remember it well. Um, and that got me. But, and there was nothing else anybody could do. Teachers would say, you need to, you know, a bit more work yeah. at home. No, I'm out playing. Sitting in bed at night, driving my father crazy. Even on the acoustic guitar, I go, trying to sleep. I got to work at five <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, and that virus stayed with me. And it's not gone. That's great. Are you much of a gear gear freak? Um, I like inefficient. Most of the amp builders, the individual amp builders that I'd come across, want to make a real efficient amplifier. I don't. I want something that I can turn to four or five and it starts cranking. Oh, yeah. You know? And if you put it up too much more, all you do is crunch it down. Um, so on valves and a lead. I do have a Wawa because um, I wrote a song that was quite well known in England with a wah on it, so I've, I used that. I have an analog delay, not a digital delay for a kind of a Scotty Moore type sound. Yeah. Um, and I've added now just recently a little bit of a distortion pedal for about two numbers, but only, only a little bit. What, what kind of pedal is that? Uh, it's, it's actually made by a German guy. Uh, I can't think what it's called. I, I'm no good with, um, with pedals, no, not at all, none of it. Never got the rack. Never no. got, never got any of that. Um, no, I stuck with the lead, and I stuck with being a rhythm guitar player because I loved as, it. As pure as possible. Well, yeah, all the guitar players I like, whether it was Scotty Moore, uh, Wes Montgomery, Albert King, BB King, Freddie King, you name them. Yeah. They just plugged in, and, and they, they had those, they had those bloody amplifiers. You know, they're just. Yeah. It was a raw sound. It's not. Yeah. It's not. Can't, don't give me presence. Don't give me EQ. Give me volume. Tone, and no more. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a guy in America, a guy called Jim Ob Oblon, a uh, fantastic guitar player. He's a drummer for Paul Simon, by the way. Okay. <laughs> After Steve Gadd, he became the drummer for Paul Simon, but he has his own band too. And uh, he does a little thing, you know, kind of a teaching thing. And he just had this amplifier and it was just, that was it. And you went, wow. what more do you want? You know, you know I, I, I'm, Two of my guitars, I have one pickup. And they go, uh, why only the one pickup? Because that's all we need. I don't need two pickups. I want one sound. 
If it sounds good. Yeah. And, yeah. I don't, and I'm, I'm no good at adjusting and adding and taking away and presence and mid. No. Mm, oh, that's good. No, that, you know, just turn that once. Please. It's always been that way. Even in the studio, I know nothing. I just play. Luckily, I've good engineers. Yeah. You know, you know, just get what I'm doing. Great. That's a great um, conclusion. Thank you, Ed. I've Thank enjoyed you, it. Andy. Thank you very much. My Have pleasure. a great show. And I look forward to your show, and too. I think it's time for me to do the sound check. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Hey, good luck. <laughs>